Fred, uh, fine-tuning to me is one of the deep probes of what the universe is. And because I would like to have fine-tuning be of some great significance, I force myself to look at the opposite, to look at the fallacies involved in fine-tuning thinking. So you, you've been involved in showing how the uh, fine-tuned so-called ranges are maybe broader than some people have expected and various implications from that. So g give me some examples of where uh, in the universe, in terms of, of, of making the universe as it is today, that there are fallacies in the kinds of, of narrow fine-tuning thinking that some would propose. Well, there's a number of them. One statement that you hear some folks making is that if you just change the constants of nature a little bit, then stars would cease to exist or stars would not be able to function. Right. So one of the fallacies of fine-tuning is that often such statements are made under reasonable assumptions, but they don't actually do the calculation. So to answer that question, what you have to do is you have to build a stellar structure model, and then you have to put in make the stellar structure model robust enough it can change the value of the gravitational constant, the value of the fine structure constant, which sets the electromagnetic force, and perhaps the nuclear constants, and then actually run the stellar structure model or calculate when you have a valid model and when you don't. So remarkably, relatively little work on that has been done relative to the amount of claims that have been done. <laughs> so as a result, um, I've been trying to fill in some of those gaps, and I'm not the only one, but we're trying to work on that. And what we find is that if you just consider gravity and the fine structure constant alpha, you can change gravity to be stronger by a factor of almost a million and smaller by almost a factor of a billion, and stars still work. You can make alpha almost a factor of a hundred larger and a hundred smaller, and stars still work. So the real estate and parameter space for which stars work is actually relatively large. Now, one of the issues in fine-tuning is, now that I've said, well, this is the range that lets stars work, people can then ask, is that fine-tuned? Yeah. Because you have to say, is that range large compared to what? Right. And right. also compared to what the possible values of those constants are, and we do not know that. So let me understand if uh, gravity can, uh, uh, can be modified by a million in one direction and a billion in another direction and, and, uh, and the electromagnetic uh, by a hundredfold in each direction. Is that a, a, a varying one parameter at a time or you're doing that and, and uh, titrating others to, to make that work? For that statement, it's varying just those two parameters at the same time. Two parameters. So you have both going on at the same time. So, right. so if, if you're increasing gravity or decreasing gravity, you're, you're modifying the other to see if you can make it work. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, that's so fair. That's for, fair. Yeah, so for each value of gravity, you have a range of, of alpha that right. works. Right. And right. then if you make gravity too large, there is no range of alpha that works and it goes right. to zero. Right. Okay. Remarkably, as you make gravity weaker and weaker, you can always find an alpha that works. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Or at least we haven't, I mean, the, 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 by that time, the stars don't look anything like the ones in our universe. They're like huge puffy things that okay. are the size of the universe, right. but um, they still burn. <laughs> yeah. right. So one of the questions, of course, is, you know, how, just because you have a working star, what kind of stars do you need, right? Yeah, of course. And, and then the other question is... Um, to, to make a habitable universe. To make a habitable universe. And then all I've quoted thus far in that statement is what it takes to have a star that works. Yeah, you course. might want your stars to have certain properties. For example, you might want them to be hot. You want, yeah. may want yeah. them to be hot so that the habitable zone is outside the star. Yeah. You also might want them to be long-lived. Right. So you want them to be to live as long as, let's say, a billion years, because at, yeah. at least that might be what you need for life. But of course, if you change alpha, you change what it needs to be a billion years. Yeah. So you, what you really want is not a billion years, but 10 to the 33 ticks of the atomic clock. Uh -huh. So Because as you change the fine structure yeah. constant alpha, you change how atoms work. Yeah. But if you take that into account, so you take only hot stars, and only long-lived stars, where long lives longer than the moral equivalent of a billion years. Mm -hmm. And hot is hotter than the moral equivalent of 300 Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Then you only lose a small bit of that parameter space. Uh, okay. So uh, there's still a bit left. There's quite a lot left. So okay. So there's a lot left. All right. So now I understand that in terms of, in terms of modifying and titrating two parameters at the same time yeah. to get your, get yeah. your, your, your possibility of parameter space right. where the, the, your yeah. universe your simulated universe can be habitable. Right. All right. Now, now your, the question you raised, which is a very valid one, is what is fine-tuning? Yeah. Because if, if gravity uh, is um, 
10 to the 40th times smaller than the electromagnetic uh, force, as, as, as just an example. Yeah. If, if, you, uh, if you modify it a billion times, which is 10 to the 9th, is, is a minuscule fraction of 10 to the 40th in terms of ratio. Right. In fact, if you make gravity smaller, you make that problem worse. It goes in the yeah. wrong direction. Yeah. If you want to make the hierarchy smaller, you have to make gravity stronger. Right, right. And, and the sure, strongest sure. you can make it, I said, is maybe a factor of a million. But if you want the stars to be long-lived, it's more like a factor of 10 to the 4. So the you can make that ratio better, but that ratio of this problem of 10 to the 40 that you mentioned, but you can only make it better by about four orders of magnitude. Okay, so, so you can go from 10 to the 40 to 10, 10 to the 36, 36. <laughs> or 10 to the 36 to 10 to the 32, yeah, depending on how yeah. you do the original number. <laughs> but the point is there's still going to be a hierarchy between gravity right. and electromagnetism. Right, and that's a trillion, trillion, trillion order of magnitude. Yes, right, three trillions. Yeah, three trillions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so, so you can still argue that's pretty fine-tuned. Well, it depends what you mean by fine-tuned. That's right, that's the whole point. So there's one, there's two ways to be fine-tuned in this conversation, so let's just put them on the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One is, what factor can you vary a parameter, a constant, or a cosmological parameter, and still have a valid universe? And the second is, what is the value of the constant relative to some expected value? Right. So in the first case, when we just want to vary the ranges, I would say the ranges are factors of hundreds, thousands, big numbers. That's not, to my mind, super fine-tuned. But there are still hierarchies that remain, as you pointed out. So if you're worried about hierarchies, there's a problem. If you're just worried about ranges, not so much of a problem. Yeah. And, and why would you worry about hierarchies other than you want some sort of a artistic beauty of how everything sort of fits together. Well, I think backing up to the grand scheme of physics, what we want to understand are the four forces of nature. Yes. And gravity is very much the odd man out yep. in that, depending on how you do your accounting, it's 40 orders of magnitude weaker than everything else. I mean, now it is true that the strong force is stronger than the electric force. That's why we call it the strong force. <laughs> and the electric force is stronger than the weak force. That's why we call it the weak force. But they have sort of a reasonable range of parameters or strengths, whereas gravity is very, very, very far well, I mean, down. Reasonable, that means in the same order, general category. Yeah, they're factors of a thousand-ish, yeah, right. whereas not 10 to the 40, right? right? And so there's this weird thing that gravity is the odd man out. Gravity is much weaker than anything else. And that's the hierarchy, that ratio of the right. strength of gravity to the other forces um, that is a problem. Yeah, the, or an issue that physicists would like to understand. Right, and, and that's sort of a, a broader understanding of fine-tuning, but the uh, classical fine-tuning is the first category. Is, 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 is Just varying ranges. Varying yeah. ranges, yeah. And, 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 and how can you have a habitable universe? Exactly. And so your argument from, from data is that uh, some of the, the claims of fine-tuning that uh, some would give uh, being so tight ranges are, are not valid. Yeah, well, not all of them have even done the stellar structure calculation, so I would say they're at least premature, right? Let me give you another instance, um, and this is something that's ongoing, so this is a little bit preliminary, but people have claimed that if you make the strong force weaker, then deuterium will be unbound. Now, the way we get heavy elements in our universe is that protons combine to form deuterium, deuterium makes helium-3, helium-4, helium-4 makes, makes carbon, carbon, and on we go all the way up to uranium. It's a little more complicated than yeah. that, but you know, that's the general idea. The point is that deuterium is the first step on that ladder. So many authors have claimed that if you have unstable deuterium, then you cannot make heavy elements and the universe would be dead. But it turns out that stars can make heavy elements even with unstable deuterium. And the reason is that even though deuterium is unstable, a star will still make it. It's just that it will die. Yeah. Okay? But here's the deal. When you make deuterium, you're turning a proton into a neutron. Well, you have two protons, and one of the protons turns into right. a neutron to make the deuterium. The reason why deuterium is a very slow reaction is because the weak force is necessary to turn that proton into a neutron. But when the deuterium decays, it won't decay back into the two original protons. Most of the time, it will decay into a proton and a neutron. So you've already got the neutron. Oh. And the neutrons live for 10 minutes. The half-life of a neutron is about 10 minutes. So Inside a star, that's forever <laughs> at the high densities, at high enough density and temperature. Right. So you make deuterium inside the star, or the star makes deuterium, it decays into neutrons, but the neutron can immediately interact with the proton, and the interaction rate for proton on neutron is 10 to the 16 or something mm -hmm. times faster than proton on proton, and that helps. 
Mm. So you, your neutrons will then reinteract with protons, and that will build up a standing population of deuterium, which keeps decaying, but some of that can decay or can interact with the neutron and make helium-3 and helium-4, and once you're stable, you're good. Yeah. So this triple nucleon reaction actually can produce energy and hence he and heavy elements in stars. And as soon as you get any, any amount of heavy elements, then you have a little bit of carbon, and as soon as you have a little bit of carbon, stars can operate through the CNO cycle, and they don't need deuterium. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you can have stars that operate more or less normally. 